one of the reasons why we spend a good amount of time in this course in teaching you how to use computer-aided data acquisition. Um, it involves the use of both hardware and software. And we adopt the use of National Instruments hardware and, and software for this course, but uh, it should be clear that there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, and um, to be clear, the hardware is what provides a way for you to connect you know, to the real world and to control and collect and send signals. And uh, it should be kept in mind that these signals can take uh, several forms as we've been discussing, right? Uh, be very clear that LabVIEW is just the software that controls that hardware, but they're kind of used collectively. So uh, LabVIEW provides a way to um, write programs that uh, can not only control the hardware, uh, as you'll learn how to do in an upcoming lab, but also once you bring that data into the LabVIEW environment, um, you can then process it uh, directly in that same platform. And uh, some familiarity with both of these is, is really needed for, for you know, practical uh, applications and use. Computer-aided data acquisition, which we'll refer to as DAC, comes in many different forms. You can have a computer that communicates over build that up over different types of of uh, cables, say uh, RS two thirty two is an older form, but there's uh, many different uh, types of serial types or parallel types of communications for controlling uh, external instruments. So it, it may be hard to see in this figure, but it shows a, a computer with say some board that can communicate with and this is as a digital multimeter so you can have dedicated instruments that you can control and LabVIEW for example could be running on the computer controlling the interfacing with that instrument and sometimes the when you want to use this is say these might be specialized instruments that have the capacity to measure very very low voltages say or maybe very um, high speed data acquisition that maybe it's not available in a board that you might put directly in the computer like as shown you know say you know in this case or in, in some of these other cases um, so you could also have dedicated boxes for example that have different types of boards inside them and then you uh, communicate again through uh, some noise cable uh, some cables that offer very low noise um, in, in that, that they can they get the signals into the computer right so out here uh, in these boxes, uh, you could have um, higher, um, more precise measurements that are being made away from the noisy environment of a computer. And then you just have interface boards, right, that do the communications. There's a lot of different ways to do this. The, the, uh, the, the way we work in this lab is we use a USB uh, interface to communicate with a small um, data acquisition board called the MyDAC that National Instruments makes. It's made specifically for um, sort of starter type applications, especially for educational environments. And we'll talk a little bit about the MyDAC. You can also, of course, have wireless communication. So this is an example of, a, of an NI uh, device that has, uh, say, about four different A analog inputs. So it has A to D converters, maybe fast A to D, and you can see it's got a wire, then a wireless interface to a computer. And this device collects and stores a lot of data and then transmits it wirelessly to, to a computer. So a lot of different ways to, to, um, to have data acquisition working um, on, on your computer. Now some comments on the specific comments on the, on the M, on NI MyDAC. You can see this device, it's a small platform. It's got interfaces on the left uh, that uh, where you can connect directly to signals. This actually will, as the wheel use it in in the uh, in the lab, also has a prototyping board that connects right to this connector here. The 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 MyDAC also has uh, connections like you'd have on a digital multimeter. So as you can see, there's a high and low connection. It's also also a, a common connection. So you can make voltage measurements. Uh, you can even make resistance measurements on this device. Um, the my the my deck only has two analog inputs and two analog outputs. Uh, 
and uh, the two analog inputs uh, have an A to D converter that you can use to measure uh, the types of analog signals that we have uh, been talking about with respect to sensors and so on. And uh, here is just uh, another figure that's taken right out of the uh, MyDAC manual, which you can find. I think there's a link to it from the Canvas site. And you can also search for it directly uh, online, available from, from the NI website. The A to D converter uh, is something that you might have been introduced to um, in your uh, previous courses in circuits or in mechatronics. I like this, even though this is a rather old figure, it just kind of shows you the, the heart of most of these types of devices, A to D converters, um, uh, at, 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 the, at the heart of it, really most of them measure uh, DC voltage, but then you can have a lot of other circuitry that allows you to measure uh, other types of quantities. So actually this is a schematic for a typical digital multimeter, and as you can see, um, it allows you to measure uh, resistance, here's ohms, current, and voltage. So the, the at the heart of, of any instrument such as this, either a multimeter or the, or the MIDAC, uh, even though it might be able to measure these quantities, there's other circuits involved that, con that convert uh, those quantities into a form that can be measured by the ADD converter, which again is really just measuring voltage. Okay, so uh, that's really the whole point of this slide is to say that, you know, measurement of most electrical analog quantities is done by an ADD converter, which is a voltage measurement. And you know, if you've played with Arduinos and used Arduinos, you know that mostly what they measure is voltage. And then again, you can design them to measure other types of quantities. So for the purposes of this course and for a lot of basic applications, there are a few things that you should be careful about when you're using uh, A to D conversion for measurement. You should pay attention to what we'll call resolution, which is what is the level that you can measure voltages. You know, you're, you're digitizing analog signals into smaller sizes, right? So if you like, uh, so you, you need to know something about the resolution. You can find that on specification. How fast should you sample? So the first one of these talks about digitizing the level of the voltage signal, say. The second here is talking about how fast you sample those over time. And you know that you have to choose what's called a sample rate. And then, and then how many times should you sample to collect the signal? All of these are decisions that you need to make. For any kind of specific hardware that you're using, there's things that you need to learn also. For, for, so for example, for most National Instruments platforms, you should learn something about how to configure the device. And there's, there's a piece of software that comes installed with LabVIEW called NIMAX that you learn how to use. And that um, uh, allows you, it's the Measurement Automation Explorer, allows you to uh, look at your, basically your uh, instrumentation that's connected to your computer and allows you to configure it also from this uh, from this application. Uh, it shows you um, also how to connect signals. A lot of times, you know, that's something that you also have to do depending on what kind of hardware you're using. NIMAX can help you to do that, make the right connections to the actual hardware on the device that you're using. So, for example, when you plug in a NIMAX, sorry, a MyDAC, the NIMAX will show you the connections that are available and how to make sure that you connect them correctly. There's a lot of wizards and so on that are very useful. Um, you should know how many channels you have that, that you're going to sample. And then, of course, you need to figure out how to, how, how to deal with the data once you've collected it. These are some of the things that you're going to be learning how to do step by step in, in the uh, 144L lab. Let's now review some concepts that can help you as you review some of the specifications from the uh, MyDAC device. Um, remember that at the heart of the MyDAC is an A to D converter that can control, um, sorry, that can convert an analog voltage into a binary number through the process of quantization. So what's important to think about then is a couple of things. One is that there's a full scale voltage that, 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 that you can measure and, and you can't exceed that. So if you look at 
the uh, the analog inputs for the MyDAC, uh, the, that range is is uh, uh, you know plus or minus 10 volts or plus or minus 2 volts depending on how it's used. And also I won't talk about it here, but these are DC coupled inputs. You might look up and see what that means. Note that that's different from there's also an audio input that you can uh, measure with the MyDAC that we won't use but it's got different characteristics and, and that's also plus or minus 2 volt full scale range and that's an AC coupled measurement so if you think about it there's some full scale range that you can measure you know plus or minus say 10 volts so you can't measure any voltages larger than than than, than that and then what what the AVD converter is right is it splits that up into into quantization levels so it depends on what kind of converter it has so if you're trying to convert sorry compare two different types of devices say the MyDAC against another device that you're considering using look and see what kind of convert you know what how many bits it has um, the MyDAC doesn't necessarily use an 8-bit but here's an example an 8-bit converter say that has a 10 volt full scale range would have a resolution which is, you know, how large it can break up a voltage. Uh, you take the the voltage of the full scale and you divide it by two to the number of bits, right? So that's two fifty six for for an eight. So that's two to the eight is two fifty six. So it can. So the 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 difference between signals that you can measure the smallest is thirty nine millivolts for an eight bit converter. All right. So be mindful of how many bits that converter has that the device uses uh, that you're considering. And you can find that in the specifications for the MyDeck as well. This slide just emphasizes what it means, you know, what the consequence of of digitizing means, discretizing it in amplitude, as well as in time. And we'll talk about that shortly. But as you can see, if you have, say, a 3-bit converter, boy, that breaks, that has large um, steps. And you can see a 3-bit converter would have steps and voltage of 1.25 volts whereas if you had a 16-bit converter you could measure changes as small as 0.15 volts so 2-bit sorry 3-bit versus which no one really makes these 16-bit converter you know pretty good but they do get higher um, so consider that also um, some microcontrollers for example will will tell you what what is the, uh, how many bits um, are in the converter for uh, the A to D conversion? And that'll tell you how small um, a resolution you have. The other thing you consider is sample, uh, how fast you sample, scan rates. And that's usually in scans per second or hertz. And uh, the A to D converter can, can sample according to a specified scan rate that you'll uh, that you can choose and uh, that's something that you have to specify and the way it's done when we program it in LabVIEW is each any virtual instrument that you have that's going to control data acquisition will ask you for the sample rate and uh, uh, for depending on what you're measuring sometimes you'll refer to uh, or you'll hear refer to this Nyquist sampling theorem which you might have heard about in other classes a real simple rule is that you sample at least two times the highest frequency that's present in the signal not two times you know um, the, the, the signal that you're interested in right so so you, you know you have to be careful because sometimes say you have a signal and it has some noise on there you have to look at that noise if that's uh, for example 60 Hertz noise even though this signal may vary very slowly you want to at least make sure that you can capture that noise so that you can filter it digitally if you're not filtering it you know in analog so you know you might filter say you might then have to sample with a rate that's you know greater than you know 120 hertz or so so that you capture that noise effectively okay so again by satisfying the Nyquist criterion all you're doing is 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 making sure that you can reproduce or reconstruct that signal that you sample digitally onto your computer. Uh, 
one thing that you have to do when you sample, you know, sample uh, uh, sampling at a higher rate means that you capture more points. So you also have to keep in mind that you know you also have to store those points. Nowadays, it's become not a problem to measure a whole lot of data, but keep in mind that it takes longer to process all that data. And sometimes if you have really fast applications that you're trying to do, you're doing some control and so on, it does take longer to process that data. So the more data you collect in order to, pro to make some kind of decision, the longer it might take to, comp you know, to, to process that data, which means you're going to slow down your process. So you do want to balance how many points you want to capture uh, with how fast you're going to sample. So don't uh, overlook the fact that it's not just about sampling uh, to satisfy some frequency like the Nyquist criterion tells you to, but also you want to satisfy resolution and time. So let's say like in the pendulum experiment, you're going to be looking at oscillations as shown here. And if we ask you to estimate the period, and the period might come from est from looking at the time between points, you want to make sure that you get enough points so that you capture you know, those peaks pretty well so that you can then measure the peaks between, I mean, the time between peaks, for example. Uh, so uh, one of the things that sometimes Nyquist, the Nyquist sampling overlooks uh, in order to satisfy is whether you have good time resolution for uh, resolving the data in time. So be mindful of that as well. As far as making connections of signals, be mindful of the fact that there's different kinds of connections, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but be aware of the fact that you can have uh, different kinds of grounds. So I'm putting here one, two, three different, uh, there's a circuit ground or signal common, there's an earth ground, and there's a chassis ground, and and uh, yeah, the, these uh, represent symbols for those, right? Um, could you draw lines between what those are? I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Uh, the MyDAC has an analog and digital ground, and those are not necessarily the same. So sometimes you need to hook those together. Uh, and so those are some of the things that you might do during the semester. Um, so again, what types of grounds uh, are do these schematics represent? Uh, a little exercise for you. One thing to think about also is, is that the MyDAC and a lot of the instruments that we connect to uh, for data acquisition have different types of inputs and outputs. And, uh, you know, you may see some of this discussed in different types of uh, um, uh, manuals for instruments that either National Instruments makes or some other manufacturers make. Uh, be mindful of sometimes you have differential inputs, what that means, what, what, what does it mean when you have a referenced single-ended input, and what does it mean when you have a non-referenced single-ended single, single ended input, okay? So that makes a big difference how you connect, you know, to um, to these devices. So if you look, in, you know, here's from a little excerpt from the MyDAC manual. The MyDAC analog inputs have, you know, two differential channels and one stereo channel. So, the, so you're going to see that so, for example, you've got, you're going to see connections on the side of the MyDAC, and, like, you'll see, like, this is channel 0 plus side, right? This is channel 0, the minus side. Those are differential inputs for channel 0. This is minus 1. This is plus 1. So these are differential inputs that go to channel 1, right? Um, there'll also be an analog ground. So... Um, a lot of times we'll use these as differential inputs, and then we might ground one side of that to the analog ground. Okay, or sometimes you want to make just a pure differential input. So if you want the grounds, sorry, if you want one side of that to be grounded because you're grounding the circuit altogether, then you'll use that, you know, with with the grounded uh, with the analog ground, and that's I think labeled A, G, and D. But if you sometimes need to make a differential, kind of a floating measurement, then you just use purely the differential inputs, okay? These are some of the things that uh, the TA will show you how to use during lab. These are symbols taken also from some, some of the NI uh, um, literature on sources. And remember, the sources are, uh, we have voltage sources that actually are on the MyDAC that we can use to power uh, our sensors. So remember the 
potentiometer needs plus or minus 5 volts or plus 5 volts. So you'll see that some of these are floating sources, so they're not grounded to the chassis, right? They're floating sources. Some of them are grounded, okay? Read about this a little bit and make sure that uh, you're uh, using the, pro the, the source in the, in the proper way. Batteries are floating sources, right? They, they're not grounded to the chassis of an instrument, okay? Whereas the MyDeck and signal generators, power supplies, those tend to be grounded to chassis and sometimes to earth ground. Makes a big difference. And you can have errors uh, that crop up in your measurements when you're not careful with this. There's a nice handout or instrument, uh, sorry, a National Instruments document that you can look up that uh, you might search for if you're interested in this in more detail. This is an NI um, document that's called Grounding Considerations for Improved Measurements. It's a little 10 page document. Uh, you can search for that and find it uh, online at, at, uh, at ni.com and talks a little bit about all different types of ground connections, signal sources, and so on uh, in more detail. Some DAC devices have m a lot more capability than the MyDAC has. The MyDAC primarily has analog input and output, uh, so some and that DAC devices have analog output but also capability to generate waveforms built into the device. They also have digital I.O. The MyDeck has digital I.O. One thing that MyDeck doesn't have is it doesn't have a built-in clock or timer so that you can measure, for example, pulse strains and so on. You have to do this in different ways. So it doesn't have, I, I don't believe it has a timer chip. Check that out in the, in the specifications for the MyDeck. Uh, so some what are called multifunction DAC boards may have more capability than what the MyDAC has and you can look at the specifications to see what is actually uh, available in the MyDAC uh, as compared to say some other instrument that you might be using uh, in the future. Actually I stuck a little appendix here in these slides that I've given you just to show you some of what the uh, basic MyDAC specifications are. Again it has two differential analog input and analog output channels and this gives you a sense. So, Look here, it says that it can, it can measure a signal at 200 kilosamples per second on one channel. So if you're measuring on two channels, it cuts that in half. Keep that in mind. Tells you the, how many bits in the converter. Tells you the full scale range, right? Um, tells you what kind of power supplies are available. Tells you how many digital I.O. lines it has for measuring signals from digital instruments. But it doesn't have a timer, for example. Uh, it also has a multimeter where you can measure voltage, current, resistance. Some DAC boards don't have that capability. Right? So that was put in there specifically for the use of the MyDAC for educational purposes where you're trying to learn how, how to use a multimeter as well. And the Elvis software, the NI Elvis software, uh, has some nice um, applications that simulate the use of, for example, an oscilloscope as well as a multimeter uh, resistance measurement and so on with the MyDeck.